Hey, buddy. Oh, hey, Tony. Merry Christmas. Oh, uh, thank you so much. You know, you didn't really have to get me anything. I'm uh, just trying to keep it together, you know, especially with the whole uh, shrinking birthmark thing. You have a birthmark? Nice hat for a teenage girl who shops at Hot Topic. I am not a teenage girl. Oh. Whatever, open up the gift. Go ahead, open it. Oh, come on, open the gift. I'm so excited. I want to see the look on your face when you open it. Uh, is that Cal Penn? No, it's me. It's actually my first attempt at making my action figure. So you got me a figure of yourself. Yes! It's your very own Anthonix Maximus action figure wearing a Ghostbuster outfit. Uh, well, uh, thanks. No, thank you for being an Anthonix Maxiteer. Well, I better get going because I have a movie to review. All right. Oh, and uh, nice outfit, B. Arthur. God will get you for that. Hi, I'm Anthonix Maximus, bitching to you about movies because it's better than the real world. The last couple years, we have been reviewing the Santa Claus movies. I gave you the first movie, I gave you the second movie. This time, we finish it with a third and final. Until recently, when they released the Santa Clauses on Disney+. Plus. I actually wanted to have reviewed this movie just in time for that series, but no, they had to jump ahead and release the damn show in November. Uh, honestly, I don't know what to make of the show. You could tell it's streaming service quality. Like you can tell it's the budget for that. It has its good moments, it has its bad moments. I know, very precise in this review, right? Well, all right, here's the thing. It has Tim Allen in it. And um, Tim Allen is a bit of a Trumpy thumpy. <laughs> He's conservative, which is very funny coming from a guy who was arrested for drug possession, but very conservative. But the series does feature a same-sex couple opening presents, so I guess it all balances out. And being a Tim Allen show, the jokes are what you think they'll be. We don't call them naughty kids. They're just misunderstood. You know, those kind of cringy jokes. But the show does have its good qualities. It does dig into the mythology of Santa much better than the the movies did. If you see the previous reviews of the previous movies, it's almost like the writers of the series actually answered my questions, for the most part. It even has a Santa Claus multiverse. But more importantly, it has Bernard, which is good because there's no Bernard in this Santa Claus 3 Escape Clause movie. And the series and the movies do have the same thing in common though. Annoying kid elves. But the show gets an extra point for not having Spencer Breslin in it. But anyways, I don't know about you, but I'm ready for Santa Claus. Look, I even got him some cookies. It's New York, so there's plenty of black and white cookies. Cookies for Santa. And not for me as soon as I turn off the camera. I did my best for decorating this year. I got a new fake tree, ornaments. I even dressed up Grogu. Alvin is here. We got some memorabilia because rest in peace, Kevin Conroy. Darth Vader is ready for Christmas. He has a little kinky hat, Lord Zed. All right, so I went to the dollar store for a lot of these decorations and it's mostly Christmas. I tried real hard looking for Hanukkah. As we learned from Lord Zed's wedding to Rita Repulsa, he is Jewish. But I could not find any Kwanzaa. I'm sorry, but at the dollar store, I did find this nifty glass. See? Happy holidays from these two. Holiday cheer. I don't know who they are, but they are looking like they're having a good time. And if they're having a good time, I'm having a good time. And look, it's BPA free. So up yours, BPA. You're not welcome in this house. 
But enough dilly dallying. No dilly dallying here, it's Christmas. It's Christmas Eve and it's time to discuss Santa Claus 3. Which there's really not much to discuss. I mean, I gave you most of the information in the first two movie reviews. All you needed to know is Tim Allen's bills cost money and Tim Allen likes making money so we made Santa Claus 3. And now Michael Lembeck is back as the director. Everyone is back except for David Krumholtz. David Krumholtz was filming NCIS. I think I covered what I needed to cover so far, so let's take it away. <laughs> You've sold out, old man. And who are those people on the back of the sleigh? The film opens up at the North Pole, and here is Elizabeth Mitchell as Kim! As we saw in the last movie, in the credits, she gained the Mrs. Claus weight. Here, not so much. That's because Michael Limbeck realized he wasn't really getting much emotion out of the character with all the prosthetic. So, here we are. Just saying a good actor would have fed her face until she blew up on the weight so she wouldn't have to use prosthetics. But I guess she's not a method actor after all. And yes, this is one of those bookended type of movies. Something so gigantic happened that it changed Santa and me forever. Baby Claus is on the way! We have Spencer Breslin, but let's get to see young Abigail Breslin right there in the classroom. Deep breathing, deep breathing. Oh, oh, oh. She's telling a story to her class, even though it's North Pole, they all live there, they know what happened. Oh, and she's in labor, which would imply that Santa Claus had sex. Some of you might be into that, but for me, I just don't like the idea of my childhood deity banging. Oh, it was a false alarm. Which is just as well, because I'd be creeped out by the idea of elves looking like children staring at a woman's parts. I wish that the baby had come this afternoon or last week, like we thought. Oh, and the baby is late, but don't worry, because God has another present. And he has to come right out of his hell-fiery mouth fireplace. Oh, the baby's gonna love it! Yeah. It spins around like this. <laughs> yes, we know how baby mobiles work. Okay, I'm not gonna nitpick every little thing. I'll behave myself. It's Christmas! Have you even checked this list once? I have perused it. Help me help you, help me help you. Don't you dare recite Jerry Maguire. By this point, the movie's been like 10 years old. Knock it off. Baby fever, Carol wants more attention. Should have thought of that before marrying Santa Claus. You, 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 old man, daddy issue woman. I'm gonna bring your parents up here. My parents? Her parents? Uh oh, he's gonna bring her parents to the North Pole. Let's see how this unfolds. That's the plot. Elves, there could be dire consequences. Well, we couldn't get David Crumhold, so now you gotta be the new Bernard. I'll never obey you. We'll call you when Tim Allen turns into a dog. Or when Tim Allen is starting a superhero academy. My parents think you're a toy maker in Canada. And make everything look like Canada. But meanwhile, Curtis told him the other holiday deities are waiting to do a meeting. Have they been just sitting there the whole time? Don't keep them waiting. This is ridiculous. Stand it! I'm up, I'm up! Oh, Aisha Taylor as Mother Nature. Talking to the Sandman, played by Michael Dorn, aka Worf. Peter Boyle is Father Time, his last theatrical role. You see, the council, they're discussing the fact that the evil Jack Frost has been trying to claim Christmas for himself. You guys finally woke up and are giving me my own holiday. <laughs> Jack Frost is played by Martin Short. Why? Oh, I don't know. I guess they were hoping this would fill the time before they make a sequel to Jungle to Jungle. Jungle 3 Jungle. This is the type of storytelling where Jack Frost is the villain. You got the Jack Frost from the horror film, and you also got the Jack Frost with Michael Keaton. My personal favorite Jack Frost is from Rise of the Guardians. I actually do like that one. One, one icicle out of place. You are gone. I will not let you down. Essentially, because Santa needs help, he just uses Jack Frost as an extra set of hands. 
well, if it were me in a red suit, I'd probably go right to the escape clause. Be too extreme. Escape clause. That was the original title of Santa Claus 2, but there was really no escape, so they used the subtitle Escape Clause for this movie. Hey, it's the Millers. You got Neil and Laura. And yeah, there's Charlie. They're in the film. But it's very important that we get Judge Reinhold in this film because he's the only reason why we allowed this trilogy. But he's not going to be as fun in this one. Yeah, you'll see. That's Lucy. She's gonna be the worst character in this film. <laughs> oh, we didn't get enough of that. So yes, let's have reindeer that do random baby talk and just sharts all over the place. Disney fun. Mm, there it is. All warm. Just like magic. You have the warmest hug in the world. Shut the hell up. No, see, in Santa Claus 2, she was, we put up with her because, you know, she was a little kid. But in this one, it's almost like she's 10 and still acting like she's 6. That's a, that's a good looking sweater vest. It's reversible. This is what I'm talking about. Judge Reinhold was fun in the first movie. Judge Reinhold is a charismatic guy. But in this film, they kind of made him into a joke. Look at that, it's snowing in Hawaii. It's not really magical like the one Charlie has. Oh, what? Now you feel the need to have a magical snow globe yourself? The one he gave you is not enough? Oh. Come here, come here, come here. Get oh. out of the bag there. <laughs> Why can't I fit inside? See, this is what I mean. Girl like that, she's a bit too old to be acting stupid. Yes, and I am aware of the irony. I'm wearing a Jack Skeleton hat while having action figures in a background. We guys weren't supposed to be immature for our age. I'm already damaged. I wish I could come to the North Pole with you. I should be the one there for Carol. Just wonderful. This family is trying to get to the North Pole, too. Uh, I missed the first movie where the adults were bickering at each other. Let's pause a moment here and take a feelings inventory. Oh, my God. They really made this psychiatrist a joke. And if you harshly exclude her from this formative experience, you could scar her for life off. See, Jack Frost is messing with Curtis's mind, thus making him spill the guts of how the escape clause works. I wish I'd never become Santa at all. Job opening Santa Claus. Yep, the escape clause is Santa Claus putting his hand on a special snow globe and wishing he was never Santa Claus. I'd rather be watching Clifford. And now we're at a scene where Santa takes Michael Dorn, Sandman, over to his in-laws. Carol's parents, played by Alan Arkin and Anne Margaret. Yeah, they seem a bit harsh, but I gotta say, they're taking the whole, their daughter marrying a man that looks much older than they are, pretty well. And Michael Dorn put some sand in their face to make them fall asleep for their trip to Canada. And because he's a Sandman, he too is sleepy. A little sad and neglected, maybe. Just needs a little tender, loving care that nobody's bothering to give, don't you think? Oh, we're whispering little insecurities into our ears, aren't we, little catty? Stop, brought me. Hey! And hey, we tagged along! <laughs> I hate this family. I hate them. I hate them all. And Charlie's not with them because he's going snowboarding. In other words, the producers thought he was too old to be in this movie. Even though the first movie was about him. And the second movie was also about him. Canada. Hey. Yep, Canada is just the North Pole with Canadian flags. Whoa! Trains! I'm just gonna go make a doll. Wow, everyone just kind of became idiots in this movie. And I know, you're gonna hit me with, oh, it's the wonder of Christmas. No, 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 I, everyone's just freaking stupid in this movie. Everybody's just so petite. What's the deal with them? Have you ever been to Canada? This is what Canadians look like. The film relies on the characters to be complete blithering idiots. And stretch. Yes, yes, because a psychiatrist is the same as a guru. And Jack Frost is being a naughty pants by sabotaging some machines. So Scott pretty much gets everything cleared up because he's Santa, he's magic. Also new plot development, thanks to Lucy! Well, Scott, you know what I've been dying to see? No. Your 
your snow globe collection. You know, the little girl is having such wonderment in her eyes and then you look at Tim Allen and he's just like, where is my damn paycheck? It's, it's, it's me. Oh, and he turns pink. I told you your warm hugs were magical. Yeah, it's a creepy snow globe and the sad thing is him mentioning her warm hugs, that's gonna be a plot point. Big plot happening. Big stuff. Yep, these sitcom jokes don't get old, Santa Claus movies. That's not gonna work. It's busy season. It's always his busy season. Okay, Christmas is coming up. Like, I get it. You need more attention from your husband, but back off. You know what he does. You can't wait till the 26th. Hell, you can even wait till the 25th. He'll be done by morning, you ingrate. You're not supposed to have that. I'm going for help. Oh, she is running her mouth like a snitch. I froze them. That can't be, not while Axel Foley needs help. Yes, I am going to reference Judge Reinhold movies. And to think I asked you to be my elf. I mean, if you're so bad, why don't you freeze her? Oh, oh, oh. See, tree stars are dangerous. That's why I put, that's why I put an angel on the tree. I wished I'd never been Santa at all. Happy? I am now. Uh-oh, and now Jack made him say that thing and he's holding the magical snow globe. So this is where the movie actually picks up. <laughs> See, it's the curse of the third movie. The curse of the third movie is that it's gonna be bad and it usually involves time travel. Isn't that right, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3? Except for in this case, it's not so much that they're going back in time. In this case, the actors are just pretty much watching the first movie. Hey, you! Oh, oh, uh oh. And in this continuity, Jack Frost is the one who killed the first Santa. By the way, in the Santa Clauses series, they do kind of give a bit of a closure on this too. No, Frost, no! Yep, that's right, Jack Frost is now Santa Claus and Scott Calvin is back to his previous job. You never came to see me before Dad, you can forget about me now. I guess Laura is a waitress? And his son is a complete bastard. Neil has been taking Lucy to the North Pole ever since he and I got a divorce, remember? All right, I can understand that Scott, not being Santa, can lead him to a life where he becomes a bit of a Scrooge and absentee father to Charlie. But what does that have to do with Laura and Neil's marriage? That's on them. And in this timeline, Jack Frost has capitalized on North Pole, making it into some kind of amusement park. <laughs> So we're kind of having a bit of a It's a Wonderful Life kind of story. Watch It's a Wonderful Life. You know, I've never seen that. I could never get past the title. Without Scott, everyone is a douchebag. It shouldn't be any news to you, Scott. You were never a father to Charlie. You put all the pressure on me, and guess what? He didn't want me to be his father. One of the themes in this movie is that Scott wants to be a better dad with a new baby coming along, and he's afraid he'll mess it up like he did with Charlie. So Charlie should have been a bigger part in this film. Wait a minute, you mean parents pay to have their kids put on the nice list? Well, you gotta teach some kids that life will just hand them everything they need as long as they have money. Topico! Secret room filled with snow globes like you've never seen before. So Scott actually talks Lucy into stealing a snow globe. But you know what this movie is missing? Martin Short being Jack Frost being Santa Claus singing show tunes. Start spreading the news. And my god, the song goes on too long. And watch this king of the chill. And I wouldn't mind it if he was actually good. Thank you. Well, someone had to shut him up, and Lucy got the snow globe. Never gonna get me to say. I wish I 
wish I'd never been sad at all. Oh, and he had recorded Jack Frost saying I wish I'd have been sad at all. Okay, see, this plot kind of wrapped itself up real quick. <laughs> really uh, mentioned this before like back in the first movie review but I, it always cracked me up that Santa when he falls off the roof it's clearly fake snow I think Disney would actually have the money not for real snow but for you know better material than whatever the hell that is and watch this movie get all the events of Santa wrong like for example how quickly this Santa dies and how do I look nice and you're too late. For him to immediately put on the clothes when in the first movie they actually flew to another house and then he put the clothes on. You're a silly movie. And why is it these movies with time travel like Men in Black 3, why do they always seem to get time travel wrong? And everything's fixed and they're back to their current time. Scott Calvin Santa cleared everything up with his wife and his wife is back to loving daddy issues husband just like families all over the world are doing on christmas eve that love each other taking each other out and it's okay because we don't have to be perfect to be good families i mean you know if your family goes out to tick you off i think it's okay to tell them to go to hell from time to time and i'd like to show you guys what i do yep everyone's all happy and good and making up that's great i'm just gonna finish my cookies here i haven't even i haven't even had dinner yet and he's the guy. Hey, you. You're the guy. That's right. Scott Calvin is Jerry Garcia. All the deities are helping out. They're making Christmas happen. And look, it's Charlie. He left the ski trip to be with his family. See, the producers decided to throw him in the film after all. So kind. Now do Bernard next. And damn it, Curtis had to free Lucy so she can snitch about Frost freezing her parents. Okay, all right, all right. I did not have any actual Santa Claus movie decorations because, you know, they just don't really exist. It's just Santa Claus, right? But I kind of have a little bit of a decoration connected to it. You know why? Because that cop right there, that kid, that elf, that is Kyle Monaghan. <laughs> He's from Shameless. And he's also from Gotham. And not to mention... He's the voice of Cal Kestis in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. There we go. We got a little uh, movie connection somehow. You know, we'll just put him right up here. I can't unfreeze them without unfreezing myself. And that is something I'll never do. What do you say, Luz? Do you think it'll work? If you don't, so I'll make you do a Christmas movie with Tim Allen. You know that thing I mentioned that was dumb, that was gonna be a major part of this film with her and her warm hugs? Wait for it. It feels so strange. It's... Jack Frost has been defeated with... Thank you, Huey Lewis and the news. <gasps> Group hug! Ew! Now everyone is hugging. the fuck and everyone's gonna be pervy in this hug too wonderful it's time to deliver the package <laughs> santa has a new baby to replace that awful charlie say hello to buddy claus <laughs> christmas came no weenie whistle even though in the santa clauses his name is actually cow but they still gave him the nickname of buddy it makes no sense and the movie ends with them doing Credits full of outtakes, and they're not even fine. They're kind of uncomfortable looking. Beta carotene gives me a buzz. Honey! I'm built for speed and comfort. Oh. That was the Santa Claus 3, critically panned. It made its money, sure, but, uh, you know, they got their trilogy. They didn't want to make any more. The only reason why the Santa Clauses exist is because we're living in a time of nostalgia where we have to bring back everything that we remember. Rarely good the second time around. And that is my holiday 
movie review. I have a feeling. Is the screen doing its interference thing right now? It, it is, right? Okay. <sighs> Folks, Dr. Cinema. Seasons, greetings, and thonics, Maximus. That's a lovely hat, Doc. How are you doing? I am grand. Greed and capitalism is at an all-time high this Christmas. <laughs> Great, wonderful. It is. You think you're going to get anything from Santa this year, oh evil one? Well, certainly not as much holiday weight as you. Just stopping by to see how much longer you can keep going, Anthonix. Do you have it in you to review more holiday stuff? So, it's not enough that I review one of your awful movies, but now I gotta continue, huh? You think you've won the holidays? Alright, alright, fine. I'll review some other stuff, okay? Just for the holidays. Don't expect anything too big. In fact, the next two things I'm gonna review for this holiday season are holiday specials. You can review whatever you please, but these bad films give me my powers! <laughs> That's good. Let's stick around, okay? And as for the rest of you and Donix Maxiteers, thank you for watching this episode and stick around. And if you haven't, subscribe. More stuff to come. Happy holidays. Guys, I've done it. What have you done?